Hi guys, good day, good day. It's your girl, Miss Debs. I'm coming to you from Deborah's Delicious Dishes. How's everyone today? I hope everyone is having a beautiful day and checking out my videos. <laughs> guys, I just wanted to come up here to tell you, um, you know, I always wondered why did God, you know, you question things sometimes and I wonder why did God take me under his wing? Like, I mean, I've been through trials and tribulations in my life. I tell you guys often near-death experiences and just life trials and tribulations in general. But I have some of my notes here to help me because the old brain sometimes. But I was I always wondered that through the years and when I would go through things and then I sit and I collaborate on them and I think about them. And I said, why did I go through that? Or why does it seem like God protects me from certain things of nothing that I could think of, right? But then sometimes the mind is a powerful thing, and I say that often as well. Sometimes we go through things in our life, whether it was a, a situation where you wanted to bury it and forget about it, or a certain life event that kind of like um, it traumatized you, or maybe you, you got hurt pretty bad from it, or maybe you hurt or wronged someone else. And you wanted to forget about it and just, it's like out of sight, out of mind. But I always wondered about that through the years and when I would have time to sit back and just um, go through life journeys. Like go through that that movie, that picture of life, that reel of life and just look at things that you've been through and where you came from and where you're going to and where you're coming from, you know, and the um, heights and stuff you're trying to soar in life and it just makes you put your life in perspective and just question things, the bottom line. So I was saying to myself, um, why did God keep me from harm or danger um, through the years? And, and and did I do anything to deserve his love? I, I, I question that too. And then this is getting back to putting things in the back of our mind. So I was just sitting here thinking and I was like, what about the time? Now, this could be. It, or maybe it's not even, maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with God's grace that he's um, bestowing upon. But um, one time I saved a life. And I remember reading in the Bible, there's no better love than for a brother. Maybe I'm not phrasing it right. So for you that know the correct terms and words, um, this is how I remembered it. But um, no better love than for someone to, give their life for a brother. There's no greater love. And in a sense, I guess that's what I did. And I'm not bragging because I didn't do it because God chose me that evening to have me on my sun porch where I live, to be right there at that particular time to see what was happening. And in turn, it made him have me to go out there and help this young man. And by doing so, I saved his life. Now, I didn't collaborate on it for, um, you know, I've told people in my life about it. My family knew what I went through. And my sister, God bless the dead, because of her also, by me asking her to help me to get this young man into out of harm's way and into safety. She helped me save his life. She's no longer here. She has gone on and passed. God bless. I miss my, that was my oldest sister. She's the oldest and I'm the youngest. Out of seven children. Okay, let me tell you about this story. I love you, Brenda. I miss you so much, my love. She saved my life. That's one I have spoke about in one of my videos when I was uh, six years old. And I got hit by a car and, she, and I went up in the air and she saved my life, you know. Just it goes to show you how things can, um, how life can turn around. Okay, so let me get to the story, guys. And this is um pretty interesting now since I think back on it. <laughs> it really is. Okay, um I was going to, I was working. Um and I was just coming home. We lived in a not so good neighborhood in Newark, New Jersey. And um I had came home from work and I just wanted to relax. Just wanted to chillax as we call it. Chilling and relaxing. So we lived on the third floor in this uh three-story house and um I love that house because um, I used to, whenever I would go through things, right, guys, I would go to the bathroom window 
Uh, like I said, we lived on the third floor. It wasn't the best of neighborhoods, but mom always had our apartment hook. We had what we needed to survive and to get through life. We had food. We had clothing. We had each other. We had love. And we had a mom that was a strong sister. And she was determined to work and do what she had to do to take care of her children, single moms. So um, that was my sanctuary. That's where I would go and unwind and relax and it was always the scenery when you look out that bathroom window of New York City, the, the, the skyline. It was the Twin Towers. Then you could see the Empire State Building and the other big building. And it was just something about that. Even when I was a little girl, I'm going to share this with you guys. I used to say, one of these days, I'm going to go live in New York. And I'm going to be somebody. I'm going to be an actor or something. <laughs> I just... I just, that was my thing. I always loved New York. I always thought you can go there and come from any parts of the world. You can make it big. You know, that was the the, the naiveness in me, that you can make it big and you will be known and the beautiful lights and the pictures and the people hustling about. I just thought that was it. But anyway, let me get back to the story. So I used to always love to look out that window because they just gave me hope. It gave me a glimpse into another world. That I wasn't familiar with. But I wanted to become from a part of. Okay, so um, this particular day, I just went to the front of the house, which is the sun porch. So it was like a built-in porch with a no glass or anything. You could just look over the porch. And we would sit out there. Mom had chairs and tables and stuff set up out there. And we used to just sit out there. And you can see everything that's going on in the neighborhood from your peripheral view. view from where you can see as far down the neighborhood this way or that way. So... Excuse me. I used to love to just go up there and just woosa, right? So this one particular night I came home from work. I was sitting out there. And you know, I'm just looking. I don't know if I was drinking anything at the time. I don't know. But anyway, I was sitting out there by myself just looking. And um, this young man was on a motorcycle. We used to call them mopeds back then. A smaller version of a motorcycle. And he was just up and down the street. You know, driving recklessly. I think this young man is no longer here also. But, um, and I kept looking at him and I don't know if God laid it on my heart. But now since I'm old and I know things in life, I can honestly say maybe God did keep me up on that sun porch because I normally would be in the bathroom looking out the window um, because he knew what was about to happen. So I saw the guy just driving reckless, as I said. And this young guy came down the street. It was two people in a car. It was a young gentleman, and I don't know how old the, his friend was that was in the a passenger seat. So as I was seeing the other young man up and down the street, I said, this guy is going to hurt somebody, or he's going to hurt himself because he's driving so recklessly, and he is like he doesn't even care, you know, like he doesn't have regard for life. That's how I looked at it. Now, I'm not here to judge him, but that's how I looked at it. So um, I saw the other car, because this went on for a while with him just zooming back and forth up the street, doing willies and spinning around in the middle of the street. Cars had to stop because they didn't want him to hit them or they didn't want to hit him. So as the as this went on for a little while, then the young man, I can remember just like it was yesterday. Then the guy, the young man in the car, him and his, the passenger, his friend that was with him, they were coming down the street. So the guy was coming around the corner with the motorcycle, with the moped, just coming. And he was coming so fast. Now, the guy that was driving, a younger gentleman with his passenger, they wasn't really going fast. I mean, I actually seen the accident and he wasn't going fast. And I kept saying to myself, God, somebody's going to get hurt out here tonight because this guy is not paying attention. So as the young man was coming down the street with his passenger in the car, the other young man came from around the corner and he hit him. Oh my God, why did that happen? Which I knew it was going to happen because it was really the guy on the motorcycles, uh, on the mopeds fault because he was at fault because he kept dodging in and out of traffic and about to cause collisions. And I knew something was going to happen if he kept on going that way. So um, the young man was so distraught that hit him in the car. He got out the car. He did the right thing. He didn't try to, you know, run and be a hit and run. The young man, I come to find out this young man was only 17. He had just got his license. So as he got out the car, someone from up the street came running down the street and said, oh, you so-and-so, you hit my cousin, nephew, or whatever he was to him. 
And he said, oh, you're going to die tonight. He said that to the young man. And I'm sitting up there and I'm watching the whole thing. And I wanted to say, no, I saw what happened. Your cousin or nephew or whoever was at fault because he was in and out of traffic, putting people's life in danger. So um, it happened all so fast. By the time I, um, I sat there and watched it for a while, and he was trying to help the young man. And um, the other people started coming. People just came like massively out of nowhere. I don't even know where all these people came from. This guy, he had a big family, and they were known in the neighborhood. So as um, the young man was trying to see, you know, attend to him and make sure he wasn't, you know, dead, hurt or whatever, um, the people started coming around and they was like, oh, you did this to my nephew, you're going to die. So I felt so bad for the young man. I said, okay, they're going to, they're going to hurt this guy. And he didn't even, it wasn't even his fault. So people started coming and um, it, it was so much uh, confusion in the middle of the street. Everybody was hollering and, oh, you're going to do this and you hit him and, and the young man was looking like he was so confused because he know it really wasn't his fault, but he was trying to help the young man that he hit on the moped. So um, as I turned around to go try to see if one of my family members were there to tell me, you know, like, look what's going on out here. Um, they start trying to get this guy. They turned their attention from the guy who had got hit, which was their supposedly family member. Until the guy that hit him. So I was like, oh my God, look what's going on. It was it was like a, a massive crowd. They were all around him trying to grab at him. So I said to myself, I said, okay. They're going to kill this young man right here in front of your doorstep in the middle of the street. You have to do something. I'm a young woman by myself. Don't know where my family at. Come from a large family. And um, I happened to look across the street. And my older sister, Brenda, was living across the street in like a little complex. And she stuck her head out the window because she heard all the commotion. I said, okay. I said, Brenda, I said, come on downstairs and help me. I said, because they want to kill this guy. So I couldn't even wait for her. I just ran down the stairs. And um, I jumped into the middle of the crowd. And I said, get off of him. I was trying to pull people off of him. People were punching all over top of my head. God up above, you know I'm not lying. They were punching all over top of my head. And I don't even remember getting hit. I didn't even care at that point. because. The mother mode or to protect mode had came in on me and I didn't care about me. I really didn't no longer care about whether my life was in danger. I cared about this young man who I saw this play right off, excuse me, like a movie in my face. And I saw what happened and I know it really wasn't this young man's fault. So they were like, okay, we're going to kill him. And one guy said, well, let me go get my gun. I'm going to come back out and I'm going to do and I said, oh my God, if I don't move this young man right now, I didn't know what to do with him because I lived on the third floor. I would have to drag him physically up them steps. So by this time I went, I was in the middle of the street trying to help the boy. And I told my sister, I said, come on down. I said, I need you. I said, we have to help him because they're going to kill him. I said, one guy is running up the street saying he's going to get his gun and he's going to blow his brains out right in the street. Forgive me. I hate to be so graphic, but this is what happened. And this is what the young man said, but thank God he didn't get a chance to do that. So um, my sister said, okay. So she coming down the stairs. So they was actually like clawing over me and I'm trying to protect this young man, right? And um, so my sister came down the stairs and I said, okay, open up your door. So we got to, what we're going to do? I said, we have to pull him in, pull him inside the hallway. We have to help this kid because they're going to kill him right here. So um, <clears throat> I told my sister, I said, you get his hands and I'll take his feet. And at this time, people are just punching over me and my sister. They're clawing, they're cursing, they're kicking. They stumped this child's head in the ground so bad that just thinking about that now, you know, like I have sons and I have a daughter. That really, that really, really hurted me because um, they beat this kid so bad that his head had swollen up and his head had looked deformed, right? And those were some feelings that I had um, and a vision that I had gotten, you know, forgot about. But they hurt this kid so bad. And to come find out the child was only 17. And I didn't even look at his hand and his face because I was so busy trying to save him. 
And so me and my sister pulled him and we kicked her door open and we pulled him in the hallway by the nick of time. The other young man was coming down the street and there was such a big crowd. I remember that. And I told my sister, I said, shut the door, lock the door. So she locked the door and we had this young man laying on the steps and he had used the bathroom on himself because they had beat him so severe. And his head was kind of like, um, they stumped on him so much that his head was swollen and he was bleeding and his tongue was hanging out of his mouth. And I said, um, oh my God, this kid. And then I finally got a look at him and I was like, this kid is in bad shape. I, I'm sorry, but I didn't even worry about the one that got hit on the car because I saw him moving around. So he was okay. I mean, I think he had a couple of, maybe a broken bone or some. He got hurt, but it wasn't as severe as this young man had gotten hurt. So um, they were kicking on my sister's door. They were kicking on her door, trying to get at this young man. And they was like, open up this door. We're going to blow this. We're going to kill. And I told my sister, I said, don't open that door. I said, don't open that door. So we had another neighbor, which was my pastor at the time, um, Reverend Johnson. He called the officers. He called the police. And the police came and um, they dispersed the crowd and they took the young man in the ambulance. And when it was all over, I, the next morning I went outside and um, I seen his wallet laying on the ground and I picked it up and I found out who he was. I'll never forget his name was Kenny. And um, I called, you know, I went through his phone, I mean, his um, wallet. And I found his information. So I called someone and I said, um, hi, I said, you don't know me. I said, but um, there was an accident over here in my neighborhood on my block last night. And um, I just want to know, I have the young man's wallet and how is he doing? So um, whoever answered the phone, I couldn't remember whether it was a female or a male, but they put him on the phone. And he said, um, Ma'am, I just want to thank you for saving my life. He said, I want to thank you. I said, yeah, I saw what happened. I was on my porch. I said, it wasn't no fault of your own. I said, don't take the blame for that. I said, because it really wasn't your fault. I said, I saw who was at fault. And I saw why it happened, how it happened, and when it happened. And I said, well, I have your information. I said, do you want to come pick it up? I said, I will hold it for you. He said, no, ma'am. He said, I don't ever want to come around me again. He said, can you please find a way to mail it to me? And that's what I did, the paperwork and stuff. He didn't even want the wallet. He did not want the wallet. He just wanted his ID and stuff like that. And I gave it to him. And he was like, thank you so much. I just want to tell you, you helped me out a lot. And, I, and you saved my life. And I, I thank you. And I never heard from him again. <laughs> But that was just something that I remembered. And I just wanted to share it to you to say this all. Uh, no, I wasn't a hero. I wasn't a hero. I was somebody who saw an injustice done to a young man who was just driving. You know, he didn't know. He wasn't driving recklessly. He wasn't driving like he was on a mission to hurt someone. He wasn't on drugs. He wasn't drinking. He was just minding his business, just came in the wrong neighborhood at the right time for someone else. And he could have lost his life right then. I thank God that he gave me and my sister the strength to save this young man's life because um, I don't know where he's at today, what life he's living. I pray he's well. And I pray that he chose a life to know that it was God that saved him, not me. I was just a vessel that God used at that particular point in time. But um, I would want somebody to do that for one of mine or for me for that matter. But um, it just goes to show you, sometimes God put us in situations to help one another. And now I see maybe that's why God had mercy on me. And at the time, I didn't do it to... Say, oh, I'm going to save a life tonight. I did not start off that day saying, I'm going to save a life today. But everything that I see, the pattern that it went and how everything coincided, it was meant for me to be there on that sun porch that night because that event was going to take place. 
And I had to choose whether I was going to try to save a life or I was going to walk away and act like I didn't see it. And to say this, so many times we don't want to be snitches. You hear the phrase snitches, uh, uh, snitches get stitches and go into ditches. Look, if you see something that's wrong, I'm not saying be nosy and get into everybody's life, but a situation like that, this young man didn't ask for this to happen. And yes, I thought it was my duty as a person to step in and save this young man. I didn't even have no regards for my life. I didn't care because at that time I was so connected with trying to save this young man. Me and how I was doing at that particular time, it was out of the equation. So I just want to tell you this. When you see somebody going through something, if you can help them, I don't care whether it's something that dramatic that I went through or tragic, or it could be something as simple as you see somebody just need a helping hand or they just need somebody to listen or they just need a meal or they on a street corner and they asking you for coins. And I'm going to be honest with you. Many a times I have turned my back too, especially when I know that it's someone that's on drugs or whatever reason. But that's not for me to decide. I had to realize that it's not for me to decide who I'm going to give my money to if I know they're in need. Now, I'm not saying to go give your money away to people that you work hard and you earn. But if you know that someone and you feel that they really do need a meal or something like that, if it's in my mean to help them, I'm going to help them. Sometimes I don't have it. Or sometime I just have that little bit of money and I'm like, I got to hold on to this because I don't know where my next dollar coming from. But you know what? God don't want us. And I truly believe this. God don't want us to sit here and say, oh, well, he's going to just use it for drugs or alcohol or something. That's not your business. If you're giving it from the heart and if it's coming from here, you shouldn't even you shouldn't even care what the person's going to do with it because you did it on the pre, under the pretenses and the notion that, okay, this person need a handout, regardless whether it's sincere or it's bogus, whatever. You're doing it from your heart to say, okay, I helped this person out. They came to me, whether it was a lie or not, and they said they needed help, it's up to me to help them. So that's what I'm saying. If you have it in your means to help people, try to help people out because we're all going through something. And I'm just grateful, and I thank God that I was there that night to help that young man because he definitely needed someone to help. I was going to sit there and see this other person said they were going to get a tool to take this man's life away when I could help him. Was I stupid for doing it? I don't know. But to me, I wasn't because I saved the life, you know, and that in itself was a blessing from God. And I thank him for having me there to be there and my sister to help this young man out. Thank you guys so much for listening to my story. Just remember, if you can help someone, I'm not saying to do things like that, <laughs> but I mean, if you can, I mean, it's, it's up to the individual. Like it was my choice to say, God put me in the midst of that. And it was my choice to say, okay, I'm going to try to do what I can do to save this young man. Guys, thank you for listening to my video. I hope this has been an enlightenment to someone to know that. No greater love than what God put upon us. And if you obey him, he will see you through it. Thank you so much. This is your girl, Miss Debs. I'm not a hero, guys. I'm not doing this to shine on anybody. I'm just telling you some things I have. I won't say I forgot it, but I just put it in the past of my life because I really got emotional just remembering that kid's face and the shape and the deformity. Deformity of his head from being stomped on and, and beaten. And that's, maybe that's why I hid it for so long, because that's something I didn't even want to think of again. Have a great evening. God bless. Peace.